Hey everybody, welcome to the Renaissance Woodworker. I'm your host, Shannon Rogers, and welcome into my shop. This time I want to talk a little bit about gluing up wide panels. And specifically, anytime you've got a panel that's got more than two pieces in it, things can get a little squirrely. That board in the middle tends to slide around with three boards. If you've got four or five parts in a panel, it gets even harder to manage all of those and end up with a nice flush surface. Now, you don't have to end up with a flush surface. You can certainly hand plane the thing flat after it comes out of the clamps. But if the boards shift too much, you might have trouble getting the final thickness that you need. Now, up until now, when I've needed wide boards, I've been very fortunate and I've been able to start with nice wide boards so I can make a wide panel with just two boards. But every now and then I need two, three, four, even five pieces to make up a wide panel. And I've had decent luck using parallel clamps like these Jets or Bessie's work well because this bar stays nice and straight and you can use that as a reference surface to hold your boards down. Then you end up alternating clamps and it does require quite a few clamps to keep everything flat, but invariably it's still a bit of a guessing game. So then to make things easier, I end up gluing up two boards and then gluing up another two boards and then gluing those two two-part boards together to make four boards and it just ends up taking way too much time. Now there have been panel clamps out there as long as anybody can remember and I've even tried a few of them with some success but I've never really taken the time to sit down and make a few. Well I'm staring down the barrel of a couple of large multi-board glue-ups and I figured now is as good a time as any to take a break from my projects and build myself some panel clamps. These are based off of the Veritas hardware you can buy from their catalog. I've got two hardwood bars and they are two and a half inches this way by two and a quarter inches thick. Really a two by two would work well. One of the things about the Veritas system is you can actually drill holes all the way through and actually stack panel clamps on top of one another, in which case you probably want to use a two by four. Um, to, to give room for clearance. And the clearance we're looking for is these hardware studs. You can see I've got a row of holes drilled all the way down, spaced on three inch intervals. And this stud just looks very much like a bench dog. There's the clamp face and you can secure it in place with an Allen key. There's this little rubber O-ring that will actually allow you to position the clamp head up off the stock so that it's centered on the board that you want to clamp. On the other end, I've got just a Veritas Wonder Dog. This is just like the Wonder Dogs that drop into your bench, but you can see the stud extends to both sides. So this threads in and out and provides lateral clamping pressure. So in this case, I drop it into the end. And again, same thing where I've got the little O-ring on here that allows me to position the clamping head above the lower call to allow me to center it right on the stock. These holes, are lined up from the upper clamp and the bottom clamp and they mate together and you can slide your boards in between. Now here's the fun part. When I take a board that I want to clamp up, I slide these two pieces together like I was going to clamp them in a panel. And you always keep the adjustable, the toggle clamp down here at the end, otherwise you won't be able to adjust it once you put the top piece down on it. Now I can come in and position this clamp, or this post if you will, near the other side. Drop the bar down on top. And as I tighten up the little wonder dog, now I'm applying pressure across the glue joint, along in line with the glue joint, but these little studs actually shift back and they pull this top piece down. So as I tighten it, it's actually applying pressure in all four directions. So you can see it's in there firmly. And as I run my fingers over here, I can feel that glue joint is perfectly flush on the top and the bottom. And that's the real brilliance of the panel clamps. You can imagine, I've just got two boards in here, but if I were to stack a third and a fourth in here, these calls allow for a full 38 inch span between the posts. So I could put quite a few boards in here to create a nice flush glue up. 
But I gotta say, it's a very cool system. The adjustability of it, the simplicity of it is really awesome. These studs can be taken out and actually used right on your bench top. You've got this wonder dog that you could pull out and use for various things around the shop. So there is some multi-purpose nature to it, but there's a catch to this whole thing. When you buy one of these panel clamps from Veritas, obviously it doesn't come with a lumber. What you see is what you get. You get one stud and one threaded rod. Only one, and last I checked, they were $45 US. So one of these is not gonna really help you with a panel. You're gonna need at least two of them for your typical panel. If I were making a full length dining table, I would probably wanna run three panel clamps along it and then some extra parallel clamps in between. So you could be looking at, you know, $100, $150 just to make enough panel clamps for your typical glue up. Don't get me wrong, I love this setup. I wish that I could, you know, make a whole bunch more, but I started thinking about what it is. If I'm supplying the lumber already, and I just need a stud on this end with a clamp face, and a stud on this end with some sort of threaded mechanism to clamp it, I can make one of those myself. So, off to Home Depot I go. So here's what I came up with. I picked up, a 12 inch long piece of three quarter inch diameter threaded rod. And that's gonna be my studs. As you can see, I've got plenty here to make uh, at least four of these to make two more panel clamps. And this will just fit in the exact same hole that we're using. Then I've gotten some 3 8 inch bolts and a tap that matches them. All told, this hardware cost me $8. Now I started thinking about drilling the hole through the three quarter inch rod and tapping it, and that might be a little bit difficult. So I spent another couple bucks and I bought this coupler that's used to attach two threaded rods together. Well, what I can do is thread it on here, use some Loctite or something to secure it in place, and it will give me a flat surface to drill into, a flat surface to reference on, and to drill into, and then to tap. So what I'm gonna do is actually cut this in half so that this will be the block that I can thread to and I'll be able to make two of these posts with it. Plus, with this being so long, I can't clamp anything that is thinner than this dimension. So if I'm looking at like this clamp block here, this is what? Whoops, let me just throw that. This is 5 eighths of an inch thick. So if you anticipate on gluing up panels that are going to be thinner than 5 eighths of an inch, then you want to cut this appropriately. Cut it to a half inch, half inch wide or 3 eighths inch wide or something like that. Just recognize that I've got a 3 eighths inch hole that's gonna have to go through, well, slightly smaller than that in order to tap it for this 3 eighths inch bolt to go through here. Regardless of the hardware we use, we need to make the wooden bars first. I grabbed some old gray and beat up lumber from the back of the lumber yard, and it turns out it was sapili once I started cutting into it. Now it's in pretty rough shape with a lot of checks and wormholes, but I'm glad I'll be able to give this beat up lumber some new purpose. I'm ripping out two and a half inch strips from these boards, which when you're working with 10 quarter stock is always a lot of fun with a handsaw. I have enough material here to make three panel clamps or six two and a half by two and a half inch squares. The instructions say to add six inches to the maximum size you want to clamp, so I'm using 42 inch long stock. And once I've got them sawn out, I need to plane them flat and clean up the faces. You really only need one face flat, and that's the face that will go against your panel. I'm using the hybrid milling method here to flatten that single reference face, then I'll take them over to the planer to quickly clean up the other faces. The planer is a nice addition to the process because I need to have all the calls the same thickness so that my panel lays flat across multiple panel clamps during the glue up. I run a center line down the reference face using my center marker and then I start the holes one and a half inches from one end. I space them three inches on center down the length of the bar. Then I'll come back with an awl and mark each one of those locations. With the all marks, I can use a square to transfer those lines exactly opposite to the mating panel bar. 
Now I'm gonna drill them out in three quarter inch holes and you can get them nice and perfectly square using a post drill, but man, it is slow work with a post drill. It's so much faster to just grab a brace and auger bit. And you'll find that it doesn't take a lot of effort to drill a perfectly plumb hole. I rest my forehead on the pad of the brace and it really allows me to get that perfectly vertical hole. Now I'm gonna come back and just clean up that surface with a smoothing plane, just to remove any chips or anything from the drilling itself. And then I'm gonna break all the edges so that I don't cut myself while I'm handling these things. Chamfering the short end grain, just kind of a nice touch. Eh, it's not really necessary, but it's kind of fun when I'm working with a really nice block plane. Now I'm just gonna apply a coat of shellac, actually two coats of shellac, to all the faces of the panel clamps. This certainly makes it look nice, but it also helps seal the wood. Then I'll come back and apply paste wax, and this is gonna help repel some of the glue. Now onto the hardware. First thing I need to do is cut the three quarter inch rod into four inch long segments. And here's a tip. Anytime you use a hacksaw, you're gonna deform the threads a little. So you can thread the bolt onto the opposite end and it will reform the threads that got deformed. Now I'm gonna take that coupler and start sawing them into half inch lengths. I could just use regular three quarter inch nuts, but my Home Depot didn't have them. So this coupler is the only way to go. A Little bit of Loctite and I can lock those coupler pieces right in the center of these rods. The clamping rod is a 3 8 inch bolt and I'm going to tap the hole through that coupler. So first I've got to drill a 5 16 inch hole and I'm gonna use my post drill here. After all, this is a blacksmithing metal drill, so it actually does a job better here than it normally does with the wood that I put on it. Now using my tap, I'm using a 3 8 16 thread per inch tap, and it's just a matter of working it through, working it back to clear the shavings, and then keep progressing all the way through the bolt. Then I can test everything with my clamp bar, and it threads through nice and smooth. For the clamping faces themselves, I'm gonna use a scrap block of poplar. It's nice and soft, so it won't deform my project parts. And I'm milling them into half inch thick by two inches wide, and eventually three inch long blanks. Then I'm gonna drill a 3 8 inch hole into one block, and I want it to be about an inch deep. The other block, I'm just gonna drill it as deep as one of my rare earth magnets. And here, I'm gonna glue in 3 8 inch rare earth magnet, disc magnets. And the first one drops into that inch deep hole and I push it all the way down into a dowel. And the other one drops in and it stays flush with the surface. Now, the Lee Valley kit comes with rubber O-rings. I'm just gonna use rubber bands and that helps suspend everything off the panel clamps. Now I'll go ahead and cut out those three inch links for the clamping faces. With those free, you can see the flush magnet just sticks to the stationary bolt. On the clamping head, I take that one inch deep hole and it feeds onto the three eighths inch rod and the magnet allows that clamping block to spin as I turn the clamping bar. All right, let's put these to work. I've got one of my homemade clamps here in the front and a Lee Valley one in the back. And basically I just set these boards right up against the fixed studs and then slide the top bar down. And it's important that you don't have any pressure on these because when pressure is applied, it shifts these bars apart and it grabs those holes and that's what draws the clamping pressure down. So you'll find that if you have started to apply any pressure at all, the holes won't line up and you won't be able to slide this down on top. So obviously the Lee Valley mechanism adjusts a little bit easier because I've got this toggle bar back here and that just really tightens things up. Now I suppose I could do the same thing here by just taking another length and doing some drilling and maybe one of those uh, tension fasteners, but I could just grab a socket wrench too. Oh yeah, there we go. That 
tightens it up real nice and you feel these bars get really rigid and I can feel how I've got a nice flush fit. Now obviously I haven't jointed these boards yet but one key to think about is the boards that you're joining need to be the same thickness. If they're not the right thickness, these bars won't hold them flush. So when they're tightened up, you can see how the whole assembly is really, really rigid. It's providing clamping pressure in all four directions. It's pretty sweet, actually. Now, a lot of people will talk about when using a panel clamp like this by putting a slight bow in the board so that are in the, the bars so that it applies more pressure right along that glue line. I thought about doing this, but the more I thought about it, if I were you doing a smaller assembly like this, well, you could see if I put bow right in the middle of these boards, I'd be off to the, I wouldn't be centered over that bow and the extra pressure wouldn't be over the glue line. I think in the long run, it's better to make these surfaces flat because you've got adjustability. If you were always clamping up the same size boards, you could position the apex of that bow in the right spot. To me, perfectly jointed edges is much, much better to get me a flush glue joint. Now, obviously, I haven't put any glue in here. This is a dry fit. If I were using glue, I would want to lay some wax paper between the calls and my project piece. The wax that I applied to these may be good for a couple of times, but you get a lot of squeeze out, you'll invariably end up gluing your project boards to your panel clamp. So just go to the grocery store, pick up a roll of wax paper, keep it in the shop, and just a little bit applied to each one and be good to go. So that's it to the panel clamps. Lee Valley, uh, obviously it looks really sexy, but it's the exact same installation that I've got with this homemade setup here. Those cost about $45 a piece. I spent $8 on hardware and I'm able to make two sets of these clamps with that hardware. Obviously you've got to supply the wood yourself and you know that could be just as simple as some scrap wood like I found at the back of the yard or you can go to a lot of Home Depots and Lowe's and they actually already sell two by two and two by four S4S red oak which would work just as well too. So the most expensive part of this project might actually be a, end up being the lumber. Now I think I need to build a couple of hooks to hang them on my clamp wall. 